Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mic Drop Podcast. I'm your boy, Alex Wardu, a.k.a. Wardu the Dude. Follow me on Instagram at Wardu the Dude. Um, follow us on Twitter, um, all social media platforms. We post clips from the interviews and podcasts that we do. So uh, whenever you have a chance, give us a check us out. Um, I got a special guest in the building. You know what I'm saying? Gold producer, Trill Bands in the building. You know what I'm saying? Give us up to the people, bro. What's up, guys? It's your boy Troll Bands, born and raised in San Diego, California. Gold, Billboard number one producer, produced for Lil Dirk, Young Thug, Hot Boy, Bayface Ray, and the list goes on and on. I appreciate you having me here, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on, bro. How did that, you know what I'm saying? Talk about that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? How did that all play out? Like, how'd you feel? Like, what was the emotions going on in your head when all that shit happened, bro? Um, I'm gonna be honest, it was a lot. It was a lot to take in because that was my first like real major record in the sense of like a lot of people are gonna listen to this regardless if it's good or not, you know. So um I remember um I've been working t- with Touch of Trent for about a year, just sending him like melodies and um I was following up and then we build a relationship over the time and then um at one point uh, I get a I'm planning to play basketball with my friends on a Tuesday like morning and then I get a message literally saying, um, but we got a, we got one with Dirk. They're gonna drop it soon. I'm like, oh shit, bro. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I I feel it feels so surreal. But like, I was I've been cut from so many projects last minute. So I'm like, you know what? I can't get too excited until you know I see the actual song out. You know. So for the next two days, like basically Tuesday to Thursday, um, Wednesday night, uh, the A and R for uh the label literally told me hey, it's gonna drop tomorrow night, and I'm telling you the two days full of anxiety. I was scared. I was like, damn, bro, my life really might change tonight. I. The only people that knew about the song was my older brother and my mom. That's the only people I told. Because I'm a big believer that you could burn your blessings by telling everybody, you know? So, yeah, uh, facts. So I just kept it quiet. But I had to tell my mom and I had to tell my older brother. Um, And then literally Thursday, I just texted all my friends. I was like, bro, tonight, bro, my life going to change, bro. Like, I, I texted that to every single close homie that I have. And literally that night, 9 o'clock, computer printers came out, saw my name right there, and boom. Like, the rest is history, you know? That's crazy, bro. Congrats on that shit, bro. That shit is surreal, man. Thank Congrats you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No doubt. Thank no you. doubt. So, um, shit. Okay. Talk a little about, you know, saying what you do. Obviously, you're a producer, but um, talk about more about where you grew up. I know San Diego's uh Southern California. I'm personally from Anaheim, so I kind of have an idea, but um just speak a little bit about how life was growing up in San Diego and shit. I'll be honest, I think San Diego is not like many other cities in the sense that we have a lot of culture and stuff. I grew up with um, a Mexican mom, you know, so I grew up in the Mexican side, so we used to go to Mexico all the time and still do. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, San Diego, growing up here, it was really, really like there's things to do if you go out and do them, you know, not really like staying your pad, which is like any other place. But in all honesty, like I had fun out here and, you know, I still do. And growing up, it was just one of those things where I just felt like, I, I just felt like I got to do something, you know, I got to do something big, do something bad. So whatever I did, I always go all in. So I used to play soccer growing up. So I was always in soccer player, like soccer, like fields, playing with other people. And I was having so much fun doing that. But, um, and then I tried to, and then I started doing music my sophomore year of high school. I was trying to rap, but then everybody made fun of me and then I stopped. Okay. Then I tried to engineer, they didn't work out. And then the last step after that, you're like, fuck it let me just try to make some beats and it's because i always heard these tags you know metro booming murder beats like left and right so i was like you know what might as well like give it a shot so i tried to start making beats my junior year and then you know i kept on going kept on going and never stopped and now three years later i got the billboard number one plaque right here you know so all That's praise crazy. you know all praise to the most high all praises all praises and sometimes you gotta just manifest shit you know what i'm saying you'll never know until you try you know what i'm saying as long as you're consistent with doing shit that you love It'll happen. You know what I'm saying? I always, I'm a firm believer in like things will happen to people as long as they're persistent and consistent and they actually believe in what they're doing. So you, you definitely did that shit, bro. So congrats again, bro. Thank you. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, so what exactly got you into producing and like who inspired you musically to keep producing? Um, so what really got me started was just like, yeah, like hearing these tags everywhere, like Metro Boomy, Murder Beats, Sunny Digital. Like I'm always like so intrigued about like how the beat was actually made, you know, how this person made this beat that went Billboard number one. You know, that's always been something that I've been like so like fascinated about. 
So also that, and also listening to Kanye growing up, you know, until it hit me, like, I forgot, like, I was like 11 or 12 when like my uncle told me or something like, hey, do you remember, did you know he produced? I was like, no way, that's a lie. No, it's true. And then he showed me the blueprint and then all this stuff. And I was like, no way, he produced a lot of this stuff. So that got me into the idea that I want to make that same emotion that made me feel when I listen to Kanye, I want to make that for somebody else growing up, you know? So that's what really told me like, hey, you know what, let's start this. So that's why I started initially, just so I could create those initial vibes and everything. And to be honest with my goal with the music is to be listened to, you know? Like um, a lot of people could like make music for the fun of it. And I respect that. But me personally, I want to be on the billboard charts. I want to make hits. I want to make a hit that, you know, I walk in, like I'm driving. I stop at a stoplight and someone on the right hand side is listening to a song I produce, you know, and that happened yeah. to me with the dirt shit. So like, like all praises, you know, that's something I like, that's what really got me started, you know? And to be honest, what keep me, uh, somebody that keeps me motivated is I'm be honest, Kanye, Kanye for sure. Cause ever since the documentary came out, I like, I really related to it to a certain degree, you know, like mm -hmm. when, um, his belief, you know, his belief uh, in himself, you know, and truly like when he's like, cause I live on my own now. So like, um, it's just one of those things where I re I respect that where he like living in New York and trying to make beats. So like, I really like feel like Kanye is one of the inspirations that keeps me going, you know, um, in the sense yeah. of like somebody, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's one of my, my favorite artists too. Obviously Kanye, you know, he's that nigga, man. No cap. Um, <laughs> So, like, a, a big question that I like to ask producers whenever I interview them, um, how do y'all find these big ass placements? Like, what's the process that goes behind that? Do you just have to know somebody? Um, in all honesty, like I tell like a lot of people, it's like I want to say connections, but it's not necessarily that. It's just really throwing so much shit at the wall and seeing like what happens. You know, it's the it's the idea that when I somebody put it to me this way, or I think I saw an interview where it's like every time you make a beat you're initially making a lottery ticket, you know? So the more mm -hmm. beats you make, the more lottery ticket entries you got. So like the Dirk shit, I've sent it, touch a train over like, I'm not going to lie, like 500, 600. And I needed to send 500, 600, ah, something like that, something like 300, 400, something like that. But I had to send hundreds just to get one. Mm -hmm. But then that's the aim of the game. You got to send a lot and make sure each one is quality. There's some packs that weren't good. There's some packs that were. that, that The melody, because I made the melody for Computer Murders, I didn't really think that was good. Like, I thought it was hard, but I, I wasn't like, oh, it's going to be a hit. You know, like when I make it, I don't really think much of it. I'm like, OK, it's just another one. Turns out that turns out to be my biggest song as of date. So, you know, I okay. just really think that it's just the idea of just keep on going, keep on going and finding people to send to, you know. So the Hot Boy situation, because I work, I've got a lot of songs with Hot Boy um, out and unreleased. Um, that was uh, my uh, big homie. Shout out Brian Barone. Uh, he literally like he's like my A and R, so he literally puts me on like all the underground artists before they blow up. And he literally told me, "Hey, you should send beats to Hot Boy," and I'm like, "You know what? Fuck it, why not?" So I sent a pack to Hot Boy. He jumped on a, a beat. He used the beat. Um, we made a song, and then after then, Hot Boy was like, "Send me more beats." So I kept on sending more, and then next thing you know, we got mad songs. Each song's over a million, two million, three million. So you know, it's just one of those things where. I really like telling people this, but you got to find these artists before they blow up, you know, and also mm. work your way up. You can't jump from no placements to straight to a Dirk song. I didn't. I had to get my songs with smaller artists. Then I got Hot Boy. Then I worked with some others. Then I got Babyface Ray. And then next thing you know, I, I got Thug before that, but it's unreleased. And then after that, after the Babyface Ray, then I got Dirk. But I just really believe that you got to work with the upcoming artists so you can build a name for yourself and build a brand for yourself. And then once you do enter like, like a foot in the door in a sense, you know, then you can start shooting out for the big ones. But in all honesty, it's, it's hard to get those, you know, I work, I've been making beats for three years trying to get a song with Dirk and it has happened. But initially I really do believe you got to work with the upcoming artists and build your way up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the more organic way to do things for sure. For sure. Um, shit. So who are all the artists you produce for so far? Just um, just off the top of my dome, uh, Lil Dirk, uh, Released, unreleased, um, Young Thug, Hot Boy, Bayface Ray, Aeon Teo, Slatsy, Wine Dewey Portland, Wine Dewey B Slime, um, Boom Boom, Rally Rodriguez. Um, that's one I forgot. Um, shoo, shoo, shoo. I got a lot with Hot Boy, but um, I got a lot of unreleased, but I don't like, I don't, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like speaking on it. I just feel like, like, same thing, like, I don't want to burn the blessing, you know, so I'm yeah. not gonna speak out, but. There's yeah. one that's bigger than, than Lil Dirk, which is funny. But, oh, shit. Okay. 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 Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, that's you ain't got to speak on that. Yeah, you good. <laughs> you ain't got to speak on that shit, bro. You ain't going to lie. You ain't going to lie. Um, 
shit. So how do you find time to like manage life outside of just making beats? Like, what do you like to do on your free time? Um, I like playing basketball and soccer, you know, get me active, get me out there. I, I go to the gym and stuff, but, um, in all honesty, my life is the music. So I don't really necessarily like really think that, um, like, like there's, there has to be a life outside of music. So like, in all honesty, like my whole life is a music, you know? So I really do take this to like the hundred percent extreme and work on it and work my craft and keep on going and build these relationships and keep on going with this music shit. So outside I play soccer, play like play soccer, play basketball to get my head out of it. But at the end of the day, when I, I'm about to go to sleep, you know, I'm cooking up a beat or something, you know, I'm getting back to work because this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I just got to stick with it, you know, but outside, yeah, basketball and stuff. For sure, for sure. Um, okay. Um, so as a producer, I know producers got a lot of pet peeves and shit. Uh, what would you say are some of like your personal pet peeves when it comes to making a beat for someone? Um, I'm be honest when they try to make me do something that I don't want to do. <laughs> and uh the way that i see it is because i had this um situation about a couple months earlier where i sent a pack to a producer in my city um not a producer i sent a pack to a, a rapper and he was like oh these are hard but can you send me some west coast beats and i'm like uh, i don't really make those bro go to like as humble as i could try to be bro but i told him if you want a west coast beat go somewhere else but if you want a troll bands beat then you could come to me you know you're not going to come to me and then tell me something that I don't want to make, you know? So I think the biggest pet peeve, like, in all honesty, is when someone tries to tell me to make something that I don't want to make, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, how did you end up meeting your manager, your current manager? I think it's St. Paul. Yeah. Shout out St. Paul. Current manager, forever manager. That's my brother. That's fam. Um, the story is so funny, to be honest, because basically I remember um, I was 17, still in high school, trying to look forward to send beats and everything. And um, I saw that St. Paul was part of 100K, which is Hot Boys label um management and everything and basically uh i shot him a text a dm i was like hey man can i send you a beat pack for your artist which was slatsy and still is and I, um i uh, can i shoot you a beat pack and he was like yeah for sure and then he's like um and then we had a little small conversation from there and he was like hey let me get your number and then after that we called for like two hours and then it was such like an effortless con uh conversation like i'm be honest talking to this person that i've never met but just flowing so well with them like was really surprising to me. So that when he brought up the idea that he was like, I'm, I want to manage you, I want to build you, I felt much more comfortable than anybody else that would um, try to manage me. And you know, and it's funny because after the Dirk song, a couple of people tried to sign me, a couple of people tried to manage me and everything. But um, this is someone that found me at 17, you know, and just said, I'm gonna have faith in this dude. So when I went out to my, Miami, um, I actually went out to Miami on my birthday to work, to work. And then he um, took me out for my birthday. He um, Took me to a restaurant he showed me florida and everything that has with it um and in all honesty that's how i knew this dude is someone that wants the best for me you know regardless of the situation you know he really wants the best for me at the end of the day so it's really shout out saint paul that's my brother that's fam that's my manager you want to get a beat from me or you got to do business with me you got to go to him first um you want to sign me you got to go through him first that's my dog um so that's how i really met him and we've been together for now like two years and a half our contract's gonna be up next year but i'm gonna resign because I'll be honest, finding someone that had faith in you before everything happened, it's so, like, it's like it's a blessing. It really is because now people want to sign me because they just look at me as a dollar sign. But at the end of the day, I'm someone with, like, I'm a human with feelings, you know, so I really take into account, like, people that, like, really believed in you before and they still believe in you now. It's just everything, you know, so shout out him for real. Exactly, exactly. Big facts. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Um, So who are some dream artists that you – want to like produce for in the future i'll be honest bro um i got a lot of big ones big ones like i want i want bad bunny anuel low baby i want drake kanye i want kid Leroy, uh just off the top of no i'm really looking for like the huge artists right and i'm um, 21 savage stuff like that but um in all honesty i really am shooting for the huge ones and probably um, there's one that I really, I really don't like talk, talk about a lot, but Lil Dicky, Lil Dicky to me is like, if I, okay. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of him and I've been okay. a fan of him since I was like 2015. So that was like, like 14 or something. No, I was, since I was like 13. So me getting a song with him will be bigger than a Drake one to me. Cause to me, that's like someone I listened to for so long now. And I'm such a fan of that. A song with Lil Dicky would be crazy, but he doesn't drop. Like he hasn't dropped a single in like years. So it's like, will he ever drop? We'll see. But. Him and Charles gonna be on you know, stuff like that, but um, 
a lot of people that I, I like i'm a personal fan of is someone that i want to work with you know so the dirk one was like a really cool one for me because that's like a person i've listened to for years and he's on my beat you know mm. that was a funny one but yeah i fuck with little dick yeah fuck with him i fuck with him do you like uh do you like logic i like logic but not i like a couple songs you know just a couple songs on my playlist that i listen to like 44 bars and stuff but okay 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 you be tapped in okay i see you. <laughs> okay uh shit okay so um i guess what does the future hold for trill bands anything in the future that you got planned anything that you can speak on feel free to speak on if you can't speak on it it's fine but yeah um i'll be honest you're gonna send me a lot more on tiktok 100 go follow that tiktok at trill bands you know i'm really um going all in with that i am also you know just i really like behind the scenes you know so um i got a lot of things on the way with bigger artists you know bigger than dirk which is funny enough but we'll see if it ever comes out um just grinding always like usual getting a lot of p like press lately um so i appreciate you for the interview in all honesty um no problem and then truly like what holds for me in the future um more songs more work and you know more plaques you know more plaques more plaques more life more, more, life, more plaques no doubt mm -hmm. trill vans thank you for coming through man appreciate it bro i good bro i appreciate you bro yes sir ski.